dreams for the nation's best high school lacrosse players. The Scholastic All-Star Game, the launching pad for collegiate All-Americans. Ryan Wade, Kevin Lowe, Taylor Simmers, Brian Pagola, and James Ireland. This afternoon, it's the class of 1993's turn to offer a glimpse of the future. You're looking at the beautiful Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland, the home city of the Lacrosse Foundation, the development center for the sport of lacrosse, and the organizer of the most prestigious weekend of competition in the game, the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic. Featuring over 12 all-star or league championships and hundreds of the game's best players from around the world. Today's game is the National Scholastic All-Star Game. Hello everybody, I'm Dave Johnson along with Bob Shriver here at Johns Hopkins University Homewood Field for this afternoon's National Scholastic All-Star Game. And Bob, when we think of an All-Star Game, we think score, score, score. Well, you know, everybody likes to fill the goal up, so to speak. But in this game, I think we're actually going to see some of the better defensive players in the country. And uh, I think that'll change the complexion a little bit. Okay, lacrosse very much a team sport. These teams have a couple chances to practice. How'd it go this week? Pretty good. For the first time this game, they actually had a good organized practice yesterday afternoon. And then the kids came back this morning and practiced again. So uh, particularly in this game, it's taken teams a while to get going. I think we'll see some quality play early. Okay, Doug Terring has the best seat in the house this afternoon. He is our sideline reporter. And, Doug, each year this event has grown. It really has, Dave. And as, from the last 11 years, this game has really mirrored the growth of lacrosse throughout the country. The game started primarily as a, an East Coast game, and now we go coast to coast with kids from California, Texas, Michigan, Colorado, and Tennessee. So the game really has spread. All right. It's the National Scholastic All-Star Game. Coming back with the starting laps after this. for the National Scholastic All-Star Game, the North against the South here at uh, storied Homewood Field in Baltimore, home, of course, of Johns Hopkins University. Dave Johnson along with uh, Bob Schreiber on this afternoon. And, Bob, it is a sizzling afternoon for lacrosse here in uh, Charm City, USA. And how will that affect these All-Stars? Well, they've got enough of them that I don't think it should affect anybody too much. You know, they'll run four, three or four midfields, both teams. They each have uh, seven or eight defensemen and seven or eight attackmen. So it really shouldn't have any effect on the game. The goal Always could conceivably get tired. Uh, there's only uh, each team only has two goalies. Look at the uh, North squad will be in the blue this afternoon. Uh, Jack Moran, uh, Bill Wolford, and really the tall of the coaches: uh, Ted Haney, Alan Smiley, Chuck Rubling, and John Apple. The uh, South coaches: the South in the red uh, this afternoon for the uh, contest, and uh, a New York flavor this time around for the North squad. Yep. Um, Dave, for the first time, the kids from the New York uh, area uh, are able to play in this game. Traditionally, in the past, this game has been a week earlier, and uh, the kids from the, the last four teams playing in the New York State playoffs haven't had an opportunity to be here. Uh, however, those games were over last week, and we have a couple of the, uh, participants in the game today. Hey, look at the squads lining up and getting set to do battle in this Astro the turf field this afternoon. And really, you know, it's hard to pick out the names because all these uh, guys, that participate in the high school lacrosse. This is really the cream of the crop from across the country, and, and it's hard to, to wonder who will be the star of this game this afternoon. Well, it's funny. You know, in the past, it's emerged uh, some somebody from some place different. Last year, I think one of the players from Tennessee came up and scored three goals in this game. Uh, so you never know who's going to emerge. Like, California last year had a wonderful game. So uh, it'll be pretty interesting to see how this goes. Again, California represented this afternoon, and uh, the lacrosse players from across the USA, as you look at the North, go over the final strategy session. Really, what kind of strategy in a game like this? Well, pretty much. I think the coaches just want to make sure the rotations work uh, and that they're organized uh, from that perspective. And, and from there, they kind of let the kids play. Yeah, they barely know each other's names, so it's important to be organized. It'll be Ben Johnson in the blue against uh, Kevin Reichardt in the red to face it off, and we're just about underway. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. I promise to be an entertaining afternoon of lacrosse here at the Homewood Field. Scramble for the loose ball, and it will be Ben Johnson of the North on the attack for the first time. Johnson on the right side of the box. We're working over to Sable and now we're working back in the cage. Anthony to Tony. Up front to Giannetti. Giannetti now coming toward the hole. Has a spot. Puts it in tight. Firing a shot. to Andrew Whipple and it's blocked. And now the South will try to clear. So right away the North getting a quality chance. Yeah, nice cut from behind by... Uh, 
actually back on the attack. Well, you look at the replay here. The South quickly got it up the field. It was a nice clearance, and the Spino gets a feed and fires it down low. And a nice uh, placement on the part of Spino to beat the uh, starting goalkeeper for the, uh, the uh, North, uh, Anthony Zapato. He's putting it in a place where I don't think Anthony could have made the save. That's always him on the opposite coast. A nice play. Um, the North is changing midfield to run around pretty quickly. Uh, actually, changing face off men, rather. This is Tony Reed against Kevin Reichert again. Bruce Ball in the South. Check Check out, Kirk 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 the starting goalkeeper uh, this afternoon for the uh, North and uh, starting for the South, uh, Victoria. It will be the North to try to bring it up there now down 1 0. All right, for the North chance, this is Ben Johnson. The whistle blows and we're back on the top. Ben Johnson. He is from the Sherritts gets a bit of a wake-up call as he goes for that Aaron Bass. He was just a sitting duck. So for Coney to put in play, he's from Lindbrook High School in New York for the North. He'll put it back up front to Andy Rodriguez. Rodriguez. And head toward the hole. Rodriguez still with it. Still to the ball. Now the wish of the South is coming to the counterattack. Dan Bowers. Bowers racing upfield in the south, quickly using the counterattack. Bowers went for a turn pass. Tries to dump it off the race to the end line. There's a couple of interesting things already. Anthony Rodriguez is one of the boys from New York that I uh, explained earlier. Uh, his team, Sachem High School, won the New York State uh, A championship. And uh, for the first time, those players are having an opportunity to be here today. Again, we talked about the game of Boston. New York, one of the hotbeds. Baltimore, New York, are the two hotbeds uh, traditionally. No question. And then on the south, we have a little interesting matchup here. We have two kids playing the midfield, Mike Keen and uh, Dan Bowers. If you're new to lacrosse, you, you see just how quickly the ball is worked up field, and, and that's really the way the game is designed in offensive line. Well, in this game, uh, we're playing college rules, and for some of these high school kids, it's the first time that they've been under these conditions. And in the college game, they're forced to get the ball off the field. Play and it 
It's a 2 0 lead for the South. Look at Mike Keeney jogging off. There we go. All right, we're the South, so we're going to three three X man offense and uh, a play uh, pass was skipped through the defender. Uh, Aaron could go and skip the pass over to Mike. He gets a nice open shot with a very nice pass shot. Up the you really can't miss a shot like that. That's about 10 yards out. We had all kinds of real estate. Down represented by J.H. Hill Face off, with the scoreboard. South, so the South with the early lead. And we mentioned that uh, the North with more of the New York All-Stars this year, but the South off to that the early lead. And now we have a quick whistle yeah, after the North trying to win the face off. I just... All right, uh, Doug Terry, you're on the field. Your attention, please. Your, uh, uh, well, with Bobby said, Dave, about the teams having an extra practice this morning, they spent a lot of time running out the man down, but the problem these players is such that anybody who's in the game is going to get a chance to play man up. So you're going to see a lot of different people playing those man up plays today. All right, Doug Terry at the field level. Again, the, the best view in the house, although uh, he might lose a few pounds. The temperature's in the 90s in Baltimore this afternoon. Not exactly ideal for the Ravens. Let's see if we can get some more weather for you. Let's see if we can get some more weather for you. Not exactly ideal with cross weather, but we are looking at some of the ideal players from around the nation, and they are already putting on a great show. Let me get the feet out front to Anthony Bertoni. Bertoni couldn't control it. He tries to save it now, puts it high into the air, and the South coming up with it. This is Aaron Van Horn trying to work upfield. He stripped to the ball, and that'll be North's possession. So Van Horn did well to control that. And with a long stick, it is tough to control it. Tough to get away from him, and uh, um, he got a little squeeze over there on the sidelines. The ball's checked out of the stick, so the North will get yeah, the the winner of the White Dale Jessica goes over the It'll be South as first quarter jitters. Well, it's tough to get into the flow because uh, you're not used to your teammate. Uh, you, the substitutions are different. Uh, when you're a high school star, you get into a rhythm, and then you're into a different situation. Very good point. And in a game like this, you know, you may sit on the sidelines through two or three midfield shifts, uh, and then all of a sudden you got to come back into the game. It is sometimes maintaining. Uh, it's difficult to maintain the rhythm. All right, Matt Tucker bringing you up now for the South. Working around Eric Wilkins. On the south on the attack, Rick Sable. They work it behind the net, Eric Wilkins again. Another the suspense is here. Deering trying to get the shot off, goes across the crease. South trying to maintain the pressure, but North trying to bring it out. Ed Fay, the midfielder, he's going to lure the trouble. And it is Wilkins who does come up with it. Wilkins out on the wing. And it's put it back out to Tucker, who restart things for the south. Here comes Tucker. Sandwich. Now the battle for the loose ball. While the long pitch comes up with it, that's the Tyler Hardy for the North. Hardy is off to the races. Nice ground ball by Tyler Hardy. He's one of Tyler Hardy. He's one of six players on the field today that are going to Duke University. So look for Duke in the future again. The, the future college stars. These are the National Scholastic All Stars. Brad Moore. Oh, there's trouble for after the turf. Works it back up front to Ed Fay. Fay top the box now for the North. Fay looking to come right side. Fay fires it in traffic. Still loose. Jumps into the crease to go after the loose ball. We have a whistle. Well, at any time. You look at the South and their attack. And there they are. Well, they're ready to score a goal. Well, the South has just changed their attack. It looks like they're going to try to rotate the attack about every six or seven minutes. We have a new attack unit in for the South. Uh, Brian Rice, uh, Jack, Ber Jack Berge, and uh, Michael Carter just came into the game now. So the South with a different attack unit coming in as we just saw the entire attack. Mark Balaget with it. Aaron Peterson. So a lot of names and faces that we see this afternoon. Perhaps on the faces that's going to be Shots and saved every one. Yeah, certainly North, uh, uh, in a game like this, plenty of chances, and it can be a goalkeeper's nightmare. But uh, Pete Torian, he is from Fairlawn High School in New Jersey, the goalkeeper for the South. The North, uh, in possession. And this is Ted Susie, 
South not done yet. The uh, South uh, going to get to, to five to one on a goal by Warner Kruger. So uh, Bob Schreiber, the Avalanche of goals, and that's what you can expect in an All-Star game: uh, scoring and quick. Well, two of those goals were right off the faceoff. Uh, the first one uh, that the North scored, uh, Ben Johnson took the faceoff right down and made a nice shot. And then right, right after that, he faced off again against the same guy, and uh, Kevin Reichel made a uh, beat in that time. And he went down. Man, he jumped it under, uh, dumped it under the burgie, and he scored. So we've had a lot of nice action so far. And Doug Terring is field side for all that action. He also has an interview with one of the goal scorers. Sure do, Dave. Got Ben Johnson, a nice solo effort for the North goal. And Ben, uh, little thoughts on what it's like to play an All-Star game like this? Um, I think it's just a great experience to be able to play a game like this. I mean, you get to play with guys that you're going to be playing against and with for the next four years. And just having an opportunity to play something like this is just a great opportunity. Ben, you've chosen Virginia to attend next year for uh, your cause. Of course, uh, what about Virginia Tech? Um, I just love the school when I was down there. It's a great program. Stars here there. I just think they're going to go 
straight uphill, and I want to have a chance to play for a national championship someday. Well, that first goal Ben scored that indication he's going to have a lot of those opportunities. Dave? Doug Terring with uh, Ben Johnson. We have a shot off. Uh, collegiate lacrosse, the South back on the attack. Again, they lead this one five uh, to one. We have two minutes and change left in the first quarter, and they are on a power play. Just the right way, generally against the South, and here's the South uh, trying to uh, work basically a circle offense, trying to get a little bit of a two-on-one somewhere on the field uh, and see if they can't get underneath the defense. Nice interception. Nice interception. Well, I'm watching this game. Ideally, they'd like to keep possession, get it into their offensive attack, and then the field, and then the penalty would uh, expire, expire yeah. and they get their man back on the field. So actually, not a great play, a great defensive play to intercept the ball, but then he threw it out of bounds and he took that opportunity away from his team. Perhaps you get a little bit too excited again. You'll see that in all-star games if you're not uh, sure how their the clearance works or where, where players are cutting and that type of thing. The South trying to work it up the field now. That's cool. Matt Doyle is a big, big, big guy here at St. Paul's High School. He's uh, another one of these kids that's going to Duke University. Duke, uh, look out for, well, Manny Coach down the road. He's going to trying to answer back. You look at a very competent bunch of young men. They need to put a few more in right now. And they're, they're going to be looking to do that the rest of the afternoon and close the gap with about a minute left here in the first quarter. The big guy there in the back right-hand quarter for the North is a kid from Brunswick High School who has had a wonderful lacrosse career. He's going to the Tomaso, the guy scoring a goal there for the South. He puts it in the net, so... Uh, Greg just isolated here from the wing on the board. The goal line extended and he beats his man. Makes a nice inside move there and just dumps it past the goaltender. Uh, I'd like to see that Greg's going to my alma mater, which is Washington College. Although Eastern Shore, Eastern Shore has been down since 1984. Eastern Shore, Maryland. Now they're going to have to go through the Eastern Shore Conference Finals. Eastern Shore has been down since 1984. With about a minute left here in the first quarter of play. Homewood Field, Johns Hopkins University. This late afternoon to lacrosse action. National Scholastic All-Star Game. Dave Johnson along with Bob Shriver. And now the North trying to bring it out of their defensive third. Working it upfield. This is Donovan. Donovan under pressure. He's able to maintain composure. And now bring it up to the North. In the North, the blue, the uh, South in the red. And this is Brian Merrick. Merrick fires a shot. Goes through traffic to the end line. It'll be North possession. Your attention, please.
South leading this one seven to one, but uh, seven to one lead by Jim sure Hartman. Jim, especially in this situation, these kids instead of playing their usual ten or twelve minute quarters are playing a college game, which is fifteen minute quarters. Uh, there's plenty of time for them to get back into this game. And plenty of lacrosse action. You stay with us. South seven, North one. Back with more. Back in Baltimore, the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic put on by the Lacrosse Foundation. Become a member. 410-235-6882 is the number. We're in second quarter action. The uh, South leads the North. Seven to two. The North getting on the board. They went back to this last goal, Bob Schreiber, a good piece of uh, teamwork. Yeah, nice feed in there by uh, Judd, Ken Susie. And Judd Newkirk finishes it off, puts it between the pipes. Look at another angle of it. There's Susie, as you see behind the net. Yeah, Ken uh, drew it in nicely, and uh, actually Judd handled the ball in traffic extremely well and put the ball right down in the lower corner. Newkirk at the top of the crease to fire it home, so the North trying to creep back into this one. The South, though, with the commanding lead, 7-2. And on the uh, look at, the, of course, this is a high school all-star game, and a lot of these guys going on to play uh, collegiate lacrosse. So you look at the breakdown, as you mentioned, Bob. Look at Duke. Wow, Duke has six guys there, but look at the ACC schools, Duke, North Carolina, and Virginia, with 14 players out here today, and uh, typically uh, taking, actually took away those teams, the next six, Johns Hopkins, Carolina, Princeton, Syracuse, they were all team loyal, they were teams that uh, qualified for the NCAA playoffs this year, and now Duke picking up a lot of good uh, uh, amount of talent here. Looks like they're going to have a wonderful future. Susie's a shot to rattles off the uh, pipes as he uh, fired it in the traffic, and now the uh, South back on the attack. So in the uh, South League, South two South in the red jerseys, and the uh, sky with the shot by Michael Carter goes to the end line. It'll be a South possession. The South with that commanding lead down on the field with one of the coaches is Doug Tearing. Doug, you have Alan Smiley with you. Yes, I do, Dave. Uh, Alan Smiley from Ken Denver, Colorado. He's playing like Manny's players in the state of the year. Now, a little bit about the philosophy of coaching a game like this for your staff. <laughs> Well, it's pretty much uh, a matter of just getting kids in and out and uh, making sure everybody's playing every game. It doesn't get too complicated. These kids are all really talented. That pretty much you get them on as far as they can go and they know what they're doing. Is there anything you can kind of say that you've seen that all these kids bring to this game no matter where they're from? Uh, probably a, a level of speed and a level of intensity that uh, sets them apart from the rest of the group. Well, the great thing about this game, uh, Dave, we have players from all over the country and some outstanding coaches. Uh, Doug Terry down on the field. That's a good point to uh, about because that brings up what uh, does separate these guys. Well, well I agree with the, the two things Alan said, but the other thing that probably sets them uh, apart a little bit is their ability to handle the stick, particularly in traffic. Well, look at an example of that there. This is Donovan on the attack here for the North. The North uh, attacking more here in the second quarter. They have a goal to show for it. The South control clearing it. And the North will maintain possession. This is Ganella. Take it to the hole, puts it back out of front, the uh, pass in his handle. This is a Donovan, once the kid keeps it in, he's got a good quarter second the shot, but a nice block there on the part of Patrick Doyle. It goes to the end line, it'll be North possession, but Doyle can be prevented. Again, I told you earlier, Doyle's a big kid. He gets a chance to put his body on it. He's going to make uh, most of your uh, shots go awry. Uh, the North uh, and the South have kind of changed up goals. It looks like they're going to rotate them in the quarters. Uh, this is Peterson from Brockton High School here for the South. Uh, just got scored on there. And nice play by uh, Ken Susi. Uh, Susi puts it in the back of the net, and he uh, beats him. Uh, Sam Peterson from uh, Broadneck High School, and you look at the replay, and then uh, Ken Susi with assist earlier in the goal here in the second quarter, and this is all Ken Susi on the wrap round. Yeah, Ken drove through two play, two defensive players there, just kept coming up with his right hand, and showing that uh, speed and intensity that uh, Coach Miley talked about a second ago. Well, there it is, speed and intensity exemplified, and that's a play right there, and gets a shot off. And not much Peterson can do, he never even saw it to fire, so Ken Susi from Chaminade High School, with an assist and a goal already in this quarter, the North creeping back in seven to three now. This quarter, we have about seven minutes of change left here in this uh, second quarter. Our score field. with seven minutes, twenty seconds remaining in the second period. Cross the South seven, the North three. South back on the attack where they spent most of the first quarter. This is Matt Tucker, top of the box. Tucker trying to dig around the defender. Tucker. Puts to the turf, and the head of his stick comes off, Bob Schreiber, the, uh, or at least the uh, 
Actually, it looked like his, nah, the glove uh, popped off his hand a little bit. It was a sort of a hold there by Tommy Smith, who is one of uh, the premier defensemen in this game today. Uh, very highly recruited player from Fayetteville Manlius, who's headed to the University of Virginia. Uh, now, this is uh, the North has not had an opportunity to play extra man offense yet, but they have played man down defense. This is their fourth man down, and uh, the South uh, get a, gets another nice scoring opportunity here. Yeah. So that was called picking a pocket, what we just saw there. The South quickly on the attack, and uh, firing a shot at Matt Tucker, and goes to the end line. South again, possession. Nice save by Catrano there. Put down to his knees and made a nice play. Greg Catrano, the North goalkeeper, has been the switch goalkeeper for the second quarter. It was Stefano and Torian. and Torian for the South to bottom for the North in the first quarter. South possession now. Let's go, drop, drop, drop. Let's not give them anything. And correction, North possession. Yeah, South just threw the ball away there on that extra man offense of opportunity. Now, this player here for the North, number 21, uh, Tony Reed, can get the ball to his offensive uh, corner of the field. He'll have an opportunity to get his man out of the penalty box. All right, this is Reed, and he's stripped of the ball though, almost immediately by Paul Kelly. And now, once again, you look at the south midfield, and they're part of the attack in the uh, south midfield. South goes in the net, and Jake Bergie make it number three, a hat trick for Jake Bergie this afternoon. And he fires it home. Jake Bird is showing the ability to get himself uh, in front of the row and uh, have somebody on his team make a nice play for him. And this is a great play by Kelly. Made a nice check down to the other end of the Comes in, throws a beautiful sidearm pass to Bird and puts it into the upper corner. Uh, it's funny, uh, I, you know, we talk about colleges here. I've been watching this game for, you know, a quarter and a half now, and this boy Kelly has made some wonderful plays, as has Michael Ford and Mike Keeney, all sound players that are going to Loyola College right down the street. Which we're at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Loyola College is, I'll try to play out a little bit. South wins the face-off, picking up his tackle in North. Trying to come over. Well, there's some situations that are going to happen in an all-star game. The defenseman Kuzma is taking the ball over the line. One of the biggies, uh, you know, they're just having a little trouble coordinating who should be the guy that stays back for him. And, you know, the offside was called. Quickly explain that for people not familiar with us. Well, anytime you're on the defensive half of the field, there must always be four defensive players staying back there at all times. That's usually a goal with three defensemen. And... Also on that side of the field, you always have to have three attacking players. Uh, and that is a standard rule in the game. If anybody crosses that line, uh, if it happens to be one of those defensemen or goalies, that's okay, provided somebody stays back for him. And in that case just there, they want to stay back for the defensive Kuzma and the North team's offside. And Susie, quickly again, he's uh, speed and intensity is this is his nickname, because that's what he's showing this afternoon in this game. Like, Nice check by Pat Doyle, gets the ball on the ground, but then unfortunately uh, he makes some sort of a foul. I'm not sure what the call was. I think he may have called a hole. Pat will have to serve this penalty, and North gets their first extra man offensive opportunity. Trevor Buck, the one that was uh, the recipient of uh, Pat Doyle's stick, and Buck, as you pointed out, from California from St. Ignatius Prep in Northern California. So when we say North and South, the country split right across from Pacific to Atlantic. Absolutely. And St. Ignatius is a team that's been east a couple of times. The boys last we played St. Ignatius two years ago. Uh, they go down to Charlottesville and play Doug there in St. Anne's Belfield team. Uh, so they've been back here quite a few times. And of course, Trevor's been back to see his, uh, his grandparents, I'm sure, on a number of occasions. Well, Trevor Buck for the family this afternoon. 
And uh, we've got Doug Caring on the uh, the field, and he has uh, got another guest. Doug? Sure do. Uh, we got Jake Berge, uh, the son of a famous football father, Bill Berge, the Philadelphia Eagles. And Jake has three goals for the South and is going to Salisbury next year, one of the top Division three programs in the country. And uh, Jake, a little bit about playing this game for Boyd Delaware. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's really easy playing with all these guys. They're, they're great players. And, uh, you know, all the passes are right there. And, Really playing for playing in the, in the Delaware area, how are you seeing the game of cross growing in the state of Delaware? Uh, it's getting a lot bigger. You know, it started off as pretty small, and uh, a couple of coaches around the state have just been getting it, getting it going, and uh, you know, it's getting better and better every year. So, a young man from an athletic family and a background is having a great first half for the South. That's the Jake Berge taking offense. Is that Bill Berge famous for the uh, defense? The uh, North man oh, shot that rattles the pipe, Andy Rodriguez with an underhanded shot for the North, and it goes to the end line. Either way, Actually, there's a shot that hits the pipe on kind of unusual. It bounces back to the midline, and it's really off the shot that places player to the ball. Uh, gets maintains possession. And if you see this, if they follow the ball back out to the midline, this defenseman up here in the corner of your screen is actually the closest player to the ball and kept the uh, possession for the North there. So North keeps possession, but they are trailing in this one, eight to three. North trailing the uh, South. National Scholastic All-Star Game. Crowd this afternoon. We could crowd on that. Getting a suntan. Right the South now getting the possession. Ryan Howard. Howard. Finds himself right in the middle of the hole. Now, South with an excellent opportunity with the stick check from behind by Tyler Hardy. Good thing it was because otherwise Aaron Pearson was going to get a shot off. Now look at the North midfield this afternoon as we uh, put together the team's pictures this afternoon. There you go, North midfield. Having a pretty good quarter as the North with a couple of goals. Back to the action. The North coming on the attack. The big stick keeps going and the North came up for And over the end line will be North Possession. Doug Terry once again uh, out of the game. Doug, you have Trevor Buck from California. Trevor Buck is a young man I've known since I took my San Antonio team in San Francisco in 1987 and grown as a young man and certainly grown as an outstanding cross player. It's just a great family story like Bob said. Trevor, what do you take back to San Francisco after this weekend? Uh, a lot of quick moving knowledge, um, fast breaks, and just pretty much passing around. Quick moving, most of it. Trevor's going to go to Hobart next year. What uh, what do you see going to Hobart for you coming from the California area? I, uh, I think it's going to be a positive experience. Uh, hopefully, if they do go Division One, then uh, you know, uh, help me learn a lot more, get more experience, and uh, follow my father's footsteps. Great family story uh, from Baltimore to California to Hobart. Dave? Yeah, all around the country. Both of them. Country well represented. Look at the last play here. National Scholastic All Star Game. You see the uh, North on the attack and the uh, shot. Great feed from deep in the uh, almost at the end line by Brian Merritt to Todd Pollock, uh, the big guy we talked about earlier, was going to Boston College to play football quarterback. Uh, but he had a wonderful high school across career playing for Jeff Harris in the Brunswick School in Connecticut. Eight to three, the score. The North on the attack. Three minutes of change left here in the first half of play. Not to get it to Newkirk, but a nice steal there on the point of the goalkeeper. Now the South on the outside. This is Kelly. They work it around. They drive with the pass in. They had a Chris Brown, and that brings up the counterattack. Well, that was a nice pass by Michael Watson, number 12, who was uh, clearly the best lacrosse player in the state of Maryland High School this year from St. Paul School. Uh, tremendous uh, uh, future in the game. He's going to the University of Virginia. He just kind of the football sail on him a little bit, but it looked like a nice opportunity here. Okay, the uh, South still leading the North here in the second quarter. Eight to three. National Scholastic All-Star Game from Holbrook Field. Johns Hopkins uh, University, and we're going to come back with more after these messages. Stay with us.
Trevor, back in Baltimore, the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic put on by the Lacrosse Foundation. It's a great weekend of lacrosse, and you should become a member of the Lacrosse Foundation. Find out what is happening in your favorite sport. The membership includes the magazine, the monthly magazine. All right, let's update you on what's happening. We're on our way to break. Another goal for the South, the uh, South scoring. Make it 9-3, to three, and this is our counterattack, and it'll be Mike Ford that'll net the goal for the South as he comes down the middle and cranks fires at you. Well, Mike, and everybody picked him up there, Dave, and he just kept coming and coming and coming and shot the ball up into the corner. Uh, Michael's playing midfield in this game, but for the last two years in his high school at Towson High, he played attack, so he's a very versatile player uh, that just scored yet another goal. Well, now it, it'll become 10 to 3 as uh, we look at the other goal. Oh, uh, no, this isn't Michael Ford. Uh, this is the other goal that just right. scored and uh, make it 10 to 3 for the South. So the South reaching double digits. I think that goal was scored by number 14, Chris Brown, who's come here all the way from Kent Baker High School in Colorado. Uh, he, of course, uh, played for Alex Smile. He dug in the beautiful going to Johns Hopkins next year. He's from Howard County here in uh, Maryland. Uh, this is Daniel Hustle. Uh, make the play work on that occasion, but it will be South Possession as the North. Defenders put to a test this afternoon. Derek Roper's foot's been played for the South. This is going to be a good matchup. Here's a good Tony Smith that we talked about a little earlier. He's playing a good slide. He's uh, coming to help out from Ben Johnson. Now, Contrato's out, and this, he's done this before. He likes to come out. He's coming right down the field. Finally, a shot saved by Peterson. But Contrato jumps around the offense on the shot by Ben Healy and have a South on the counterattack. Well, here's a nice play. Good ground ball. They show it all the way back to the defensive end by defenseman Mike Molesto, uh, who brings the ball up the field. Uh, it's a similar break. Uh, Mike, you'll see here, gives a fake shot. He gets 22, sort of back on his heels, and he just drives hard to the goal and sticks it up into the corner. So 11 to 3 as Mike Watson puts it home. He's from St. Paul's School. And, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about Michael. He is truthfully, uh, he's a, a marvel on the lacrosse field. He plays hard every minute he's out there. And he's truthfully a pleasure uh, to watch. Well, the U.S. women's team the best well, uh, Time running out here in the first half of play. Indeed, time has run out. So, the South with a commanding lead now after the North started to make a bit of a comeback. But the South now with an eight-goal cushion. 11 to 3, but there's still a whole half of it across the head. Stay with us. It's the big difference in the game. If you look at the uh, goals uh, for and against, the uh, uh, shots are pretty similar. It looks like the goaltending in the South probably been a little bit better right now than the goal. And because of it, as we look at the faceoff, it is the South indeed with that lead 11 to 3, but an all star game. An 11 to 3, and we're not just saying that. A lead like that can evaporate so quickly as you look at the Ben Johnson. Face-off man for the North, and it will be the North to uh, put in possession. They check the goalkeepers. I think they've changed the game. Yeah, they're going back to the guys at the start of the first uh, quarter to Tarek. Tourney, excuse me, for the South, and Anthony Tapano is playing for the North. All right, Andrew Ripple has it for the North, and the North getting the first crack at things here. In the second half of play, we're in Baltimore. The home of lacrosse. Nice speed to Reed. Fires a shot. It's in and then a goal for the North. Tony Reed. And now it's an 11 to 4 game. So Tony Reed from Sewickley Academy in Pennsylvania. Look at the replay. Nice feed, and Reed just uh, fires that up above the right shoulder. Well, the, certainly the North needed that a little bit. There's Tony Reed, a kid from Western Pennsylvania, Sewickley High School. He's going to school at Notre Dame. A ripple with the feed. And Notre Dame has got a very nice lacrosse program. They made the NCAA playoffs this year, so it looks like uh, they're getting a quality player, Tony Reed. They're going to South Bend, Indiana. A lot of guys from Western PA end up as quarterbacks at Notre Dame. Joe Montana and such. But uh, Tony Reed will be a lacrosse player in South Bend. Now the uh, South trying to come on the attack, and we have whistles. And Doug Tearing is with the uh, coach of the North. The North trying to come back. Doug? Dave, uh, the field of 
Lauder just went over 108 and stopped registering. Uh, Coach Frank Vitola, what do you do in the second half for the Heat in an eight-goal deficit? Well, I think we've got to control, do a better job controlling the ball. We're getting the uh, middies running down there. we got one shot and out, and they're coming all the way down and playing defense. So they're just running up and down, and they really can't generate a lot of offense. We want to control the ball a little bit more uh, than we do in the first half. What do you do as a staff to try to prepare for a game like this? Uh, it's tough. You know, no one really knows. What we try to do is just kind of learn their names, and we have all the coaches have a, have a certain position and, you know, trying to get the kids uh, get together, get to know each other a little bit, and, you know, just get up and down, have some fun. You know, uh, Dave, one thing about the coaches game, they volunteer their time to be here in Baltimore just like the kids, so it really is a, is a special game for everybody involved. All a part of this very special weekend, thanks to Audra. 108 degrees on the field, an example of the great athleticism being put on by these players that are standing at this point. Ben Johnson wasn't standing, he's coming up for the North, and the North quickly on the attack, 11 to 4. Whipple checked off the ball, Reed, try, Reed and Whipple trying to come up with it. This is Kelly who's had a good game for the South. Kelly has, Kelly has had a great game. It seems like he's always around the ball, put the ball on the ground, making a nice check or picking up a loose ball. Uh, he's really played very well. Now he's getting a penalty. Now he got a little bit too aggressive. Gavovic behind the net. Still with it for the North. And now we're going to get the whistle and the foul. Again, uh, the flag went down. We talked about this play in the first quarter. Uh, Kelly got a penalty, but uh, the North maintained possession, so they're allowed to keep penetrating to the goal until they lose possession. And if they're able to, if they're able to score a goal in that situation, uh, then they can score the goal, and then the penalty will still be in effect, and they get a chance to get the next face off. Calvin really stood up there. Yeah. Well, again, we talked. There we go back to something we talked about earlier. Pat Doyle, a big, strong kid. If he gets a chance to put his body on you, there's no way you're going to get to the goal. Yeah, uh, that was going nowhere fast on that one. The North quickly on the attack, and that went right into the face mask of Aaron Van Horn as he goes down on the shot. And he a little bit the junior getting up, but the North will maintain possession. But now the South comes up. The South trying to quickly counterattack, and they're unable to. And it will be North possession. Look at this, though. You'll, you put your body and sometimes your head on the line in this game. He's shot by Andy Rodriguez, and uh, hello. Well, that ball coming at you doing. pretty hard, and uh, uh, Matt Rienzo decided that he was going to uh, turn his head a little bit and ended up catching him right on the side, which probably hurt him more if it hit his face mask. I think it's, it's, it, he hears phones ringing right now at, at this point. That's the uh, bell ringer, as they would say. That happened to me one time when I was in college. A ball hit me right in the little hole on the side of your helmet that provides a little uh, air, air coming in, and it hit right in that hole, and I ruptured my eardrum. So the ball coming at you a little bit, uh, it could be uh, a pretty <laughs> devastating injury if it hits you in the wrong spot. And you haven't been in the same sense, have you? I uh, certainly can't. I can't hear you now. What did you say? <laughs> hello, hello. The South on the attack here, working around. Greg Tommaso out front again. He's still in. He's got great individuals here. The South working around a shot, and that goes skyward over the end line. And Matt Tucker, Doug Terrigno is down on the field. And Doug, who do you have for us? I've got uh, Michael Watson from St. Paul's. I think the best thing Coach Driver can say about uh, Michael Watson is he's got a diploma and he's graduating. Michael, uh, you're going to Virginia. You get a chance to play with some uh, future teammates and also play against uh, some guys you're going to be in the next four years. What do you think? I don't know. I, mean, I met a couple guys. There's about five or six that are here today. And uh, I just got to know them. This whole, this whole experience has been just good to get to know those guys. In the MSA, you got a lot of guys that uh, certainly were opponents during the years. Is it always fun for you guys to play one time together? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I play with, you know, lots of these guys anyway in rec, rec leagues and stuff, and I'm good friends with most of them, so it's great to play with them. Probably one of the most uh, highly acclaimed players coming out of Baltimore is looking for a great future, Michael Watson. Okay? All right. Doug Tearing, we also had a goal while uh, we were having that conversation. Rob Kavovic. Uh, getting the goal. He is from Yorktown High School, and you'll see the feed right in the cap, but he's right at the doorstep. He bangs it home, but a nice feed by Andy Rodriguez. And there's two guys who wouldn't have played in this game in the uh, past because they would have been involved in their state. Uh, Andy Rodriguez, we talked about from Sajan, and Kevin uh, from Yorktown High School. Both of them were involved in the New York State uh, playoffs uh, up until last weekend, so it's nice to have these guys here today. Number five, the score. So the North and D back in this one. They've scored two unanswered goals here, and now Rodriguez cranks and fires and save them made by Torian. It goes to the uh, sideline and it will be North possession. But the, uh, the North with the better of the play so far here in the second half and reflected on the scoreboard. Well, Frank Patola talked about it with Doug a second ago that they were going to try to control the ball a little bit more and uh, stop making this a uh, up and
second down game that the South is clearly uh, winning. Uh, now it looks like the North is getting quality chances at the goal. They seem to be controlling the ball a little bit better on offense and inching their way right back into it. Rienzo will put that shot on the side of the head. Now with the ball through the South. Rienzo, some nice moves. Maybe he thinks he's going to attack them now after taking that shot. South working it up quickly. This is uh, Sable. Out on the wing. Sable by Ryan Howard. South to work it around. Out front. The shot by Peterson is blocked. And now the North trying to come up with it. Occasionally you see some players seeming like they have some trouble as Padilla comes up with it for the South on the turf. Another shot by Peterson. And, uh, that goes skyward. It goes to the line. The big position for Spencer Deering of the South. You get a shot there of uh, Anthony Tapano, the goalkeeper. Now there's a nice play by number 17, um, Aaron Peterson. Now he's coming from Tennessee. Uh, this has certainly got to be a wonderful thrill to him, uh, for him. And he's going to Brigham Young University next year. So not exactly a lacrosse power, but uh, this is certainly a, a, a nice, fun thing for Aaron Peterson. Yep. Perhaps could be the end of this uh, lacrosse because we're now Brigham Young. Uh, the North, John Newkirk has got to go. They start to work quickly on the attack. You see there by his bay, though. Goes to the end line. It'll be south possession. In New England. And that's it's the right play that Frank Capone really doesn't want. He doesn't want his team to try to get in this race worse game. He wants him to go on offense and force the south to play a little defense. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, inch, uh, as we said, the south will go inch your way back into it. Talking about the South defense, they've had a real good day, and let's take a look at the guys behind the mask that have had that day. They've got a, had a lot to smile about before the game, and even more to smile about now. Look at the South defense. The South, though, back on the attack as they work it upfield, and they have the lead. Nice speed in the middle of Aaron Pierce, and he is sandwiched, stays with the ball, underhanded shot. And now chasing it is the Capano be North possession, but the Peterson really uh, stepping it up here in the second half, Aaron Peterson. Well, we just talked about him. He's an awful big guy. I wonder, truthfully, if he's not a, a football player that's possibly going to Brigham Young. It doesn't say that on his bio sheet. Yeah. Maybe we could get Doug Terry to find something out about Aaron Peterson. Okay, look at the North defense, who uh, certainly have spent their time on the field today and uh, facing that uh, speedy south uh, attack. Look at the North defense. Always one on defense with a crew cut. To final to put it back in play for the North. And the North in the blue, the South in the red. Home with field, Johns Hopkins the place. Dave Johnson, Bob Schreiber, Doug Terry. Field level. Bringing you this story, the National Scholastic All-Star Games. Best in college across you are looking at the future of college High school across the future of college across, I should say. And Doug Terring has got a guy who uh, gets a g the game from an interesting perspective, Doug. Greg Catrano from the outstanding program at Ward Melville going to Brown this uh, this fall. And Greg, uh, being a going all-star game is a little too tough. You don't have much uh, time to get organized in the defense. No, it's not. It's much different playing in high school. Uh, you know, you have all that practice, five days, six days a week. Come out here, you don't have much time to get ready with your defense. But I think we're doing a great job out there. When you see shooters like this, this is what you kind of expect when you go to college in Division One. Sure, they're placing them, they're hard. Much tougher than high school. Certainly, Greg comes from one of the outstanding programs uh, throughout the history of high school lacrosse. Dave? Right, the uh, Ward Melville High School program in New York, Greg Catrano. Yeah, Ward Melville's coach, Joe Cuso, uh, just was inducted into the lacrosse Hall of Fame uh, purely because of his, well, he was a wonderful college player, went to Portland, but he's had such an incredible high school record. Kind of sizzling afternoon, where we had some sizzling action this afternoon. We expect that from the best in high school lacrosse is uh, Donovan. With the score by quarters, the North with the uh, better of it here. And the, the first quarter, really, the difference, obviously, for the South. Other than that, you could call it an even game. North on the attack, firing the shot. Chris Clark had a good save there again by Torian, who had that good first quarter. You just saw the, the break that only allowed one goal. Trevor Buck fires into the net. Trevor Buck, great goal. Fires high, and he finds the strings. Makes it 11 to 6, and the North now three unanswered goals. Here's, here's Trevor driving hard, uh, takes his angle away a little bit, and for some reason the uh, South defense slides a little bit. Trevor backs off, puts it in his left hand, uh, puts the ball right over the goalie's head. Another angle there, Trevor Buck. 
can see he's got uh, pressure there from Mike Ballesta, but look at this effort. Stays with it in the net. Now 11 to 6. The South leads North 11 to 6. More of the third quarter after these messages. Stay with us. Hey, Johnson, Bob Shriver. Hot fun in the summer. The Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic. The National Scholastic uh, All Star Game. It's all put on by the Lacrosse Foundation. They put out the nice lacrosse magazine. It's uh, really the uh, body for the development of the game. And it's up to you to become a member. There's the number if you want to become a member of the Lacrosse Foundation. The uh, South leads the North now 12 to 8 to get you caught up. Of course, the North coming back in this uh, third quarter. Tony Reed at this point will make it an 11 to 7 ball game. You see Reed firing at home to make it 11 to 7. So the North coming back and they will continue the comeback trail. We're going to see a goal by Jeff Dubois. And this will make it 11 to 8. Dubois firing it just past Torian. But the South getting a goal from Kurt Muller to make it 12 to 8. As the South not letting the North in that close. As you see Muller flying and firing that shot and putting it home. And that's where we stand now. Two minutes of change left. You look at the shooting stats. 33% the South, 18% the North. And it's indicative of the lead for the North. And rather for the South, South leading the North 12 to 8. Dave Johnson, Bob Shriver here at Homewood Field, Johns Hopkins uh, University. And the uh, North really was making a, quite a run, but the South, uh, it seems like uh, on the day, the better offensive team. Well, the North is an inch. Uh, they've gotten back into this game. They're only four down. They were down by as many as uh, eight goals early. Um, they have an extra man opportunity here. Uh, a South player was put in the penalty box for one minute for unnecessary roughness, Aaron Peterson. So the North gets an opportunity to cut it down to three. In the South goal, though, Pete Torian has been exceptional and has uh, really helped keep the uh, the South uh, in this game. Of course, on top uh, of the game, as North again will have a possession as they have the power play. In effect, man advantage. Well, in, in a situation like this, most times when you play any game, you usually have your best six lacrosse players out, uh, offensive players playing extra man offense. In an all-star game like this, they let whoever is on the field stay out there, so there's not quite the coordination and the stick skills you might normally see on an extra man, and there's a pretty good example of it. A nice play by uh, Matt Rianzo blocking that feed. So the South here would come over, now they'll be able to try to clear with a minute uh, 40 left here in the third quarter, the South leading the North. 12 to 8, the National Scholastic All-Star Game. A hot summer afternoon in Baltimore. South trying to move forward. That's Watson, and he is just planted to the turf. Doug Tearing is, uh, of course, down on the field. He's got the best seat in the house. He's been standing all day. Doug, who do you have with us this time? Uh, I have Aaron Peterson from Montgomery Gilbert Bell Academy in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And... Uh, Aaron's one of those players that comes from a growth area. His coach, John Bear, has done a great job promoting the cross in Tennessee. And, uh, Aaron, a little bit about coming from uh, Tennessee to this Baltimore Classic. Well, the game's a lot different here. There are a lot of younger teams yeah, where I'm from. And they have a... There's just not as much competition. Whereas there's a lot of, there's a lot of strong teams up here. Uh, it's just... Uh, the game's a lot faster up here uh, due to the people have been playing since they're a lot younger. But we have a uh, all-year-round schedule where we're playing just about all year round for my school. And so we do. We, I've played about eight seasons, and I've only been playing for about two years. Here's a young man just came out of a run. Obviously, the heat's catching up. Aaron's uh, breathing hard, but uh, having a great day. All right. <laughs> Let him have a rest. It sounds like he's played eight seasons this afternoon, and it feels like it. 108 degrees, they say, on the field. Aaron Peterson going to Brooklyn Young. He's from Tennessee. The South on the attack, and a nice reception by the North. And now Tony Reed is off to the races. He crossed the midfield track. Ben Johnson, they work it well. Johnson back to Reed. They work it in tight back to Reed, and Reed uh, misfires. And Reed is stick checked from behind. So now the South off to the races. Matt Rienzo takes a couple step backs and takes a couple hard checks from Jeff Bealy. Matt's made a couple nice plays in this game. He's a, a young man from Washington, D.C., Gonzaga High School. He's going to stay and play at Georgetown Collegiate. South still coming. That was Muller who has a goal in this corner, but he loses the ball. Now the North. They've got 10 seconds to work it upfield. Not even that much. We're out of time here in the third quarter. So uh, Ben Johnson had plenty of real estate, but no time to work with. South leads the North. 12 to 8, but still another 15 minutes lacrosse heading your way. 
It's an all-star game. Always fun to see what happens. Stay with us. The success of this, uh, this classic, Dave, certainly uh, requires a lot of people behind the scenes. And I have two guys who work very closely with me who are the two coordinators who help select these players from all over the country. Jack Moran from Chaminade High School on my right and Rob White at St. Mary's on my left. And uh, Rob, tell me a little bit about the selection process. Uh, you know, the, the area representatives send in uh, nominations for the game. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of talent around the country. And what we try to do is give the area their first choice uh, at each position if possible. Sometimes you have to go down to the second or third player because of uh, a number of positions that are already filled. But, uh, you know, overall, I think it's run pretty smoothly, and it's as uh, equitable system as you're going to have, I think, for an all-star game. Jack, do you find a lot of areas calling you just trying to, to find more information about how to get kids in the game? Uh, there are more and more areas that are uh, you know, establishing leagues, uh, trying to get involved uh, in the uh, process of not only the uh, North-South game, but high school American, academic high school Americans. And, uh, you know, the Coach Association is working hard in uh, conjunction with the Lacrosse Foundation to try to find an avenue for those leagues to get in and be represented in a game like this. Rob, you've been involved with the game for a while. Are you always amazed how well these players come together in such a short amount of time? It really is amazing, and uh, it's a true credit to the, the level of lacrosse played around the country. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for these kids to come together and, and, and meet kids from other areas that they normally wouldn't have a chance to. It's really a big thank you to both these guys for making this game possible. Dave? Amen to that. Thank you, uh, Doug Terry. And, of course, so this is a great weekend for the fans, the kids, and everyone who went there for the goalkeeper. For the uh, North, that is the Greg Petrano, who's now back in. And Petrano is the guy that likes to roam out, and Petrano strongly stepped out. But uh, he making the great save there for the North and bringing it all the way to midfield before uh, he uh, ran out of some real estate. Actually, he got slashed on this play. If they stay with it on the film here, you'll watch him run up the sidelines. And number 16 for the South, Spencer Deering, whacks him pretty hard on the side uh, of his uh, arm there. Ooh, that hurts a yeah. little bit. And the referee correctly called a penalty. And the North's going to have another extra man opportunity. So an extra man advantage for the uh, North. And now they're starting to get that to, in their direction. Whereas in the first half, the South with, with several opportunities. A great save, though, uh, by Catron on the shot by Aaron Cordilla. Now he's probably got to shake off that uh, that slap you know we've talked an awful lot dave about how this uh, showcases high school kids and the growth of lacrosse on a high school basis we have an interesting situation uh for the south team uh the goaltender now in this in the game for the south is a boy uh, from broadneck high school here and oh there's an injury now, sam peterson though you're talking about the injured player is uh, Jeff Dubois, and uh, Dubois has a goal this afternoon. He's being tended to, but you were saying Sam Peterson, though, well, from Broadneck. Well, Sam Peterson's from Broadneck down here in Baltimore. He's going to Fairfield University in Fairfield, Connecticut, which is a, an up-and-coming Division One program. They've been underway now for two years. Tom McClellan, a, a young man that uh, played collegiately at Loyola College and uh, has since uh, been coaching at University of Maryland, started the program this year, and there's an area where it's expanded on the collegiate level. You know, this game showcasing high school and how it's expanded on the high school level, but it's wonderful to see a nice Jesuit school like Fairfield start a lacrosse program. All right, they continue to tend to the injured player, Jeff Dubois. Look at the uh, scoring breakdown, and uh, no one's found the strings just yet. We were just started here a couple minutes in, but uh, the North with that advantage in the third quarter jumping out in this one 5 nothing and 5-1, to one, and uh, really you throw out the first quarter and it, it's an, almost an even game. Well, no question. We talked about how the North had been slowly getting back into the game, and that nice third quarter has put them in a position now uh, to not only get back into it, but possibly uh, close the gap and tie this game up and see what happens from here. That's the thing. If you're new to lacrosse, you can see uh, it could take a while to score a goal, or they can come in quick bunches because uh, the game is, is all about offense, and, and at least in the way the rules are structured, they, they try to keep the, the offense as many advantages as possible without making it too one-sided. So the North continues now with, with this extra man situation. Bob Kavavit, they'll work it around now back of the cage. This is Andrew Whipple. Whipple puts it out front. Crank fired for Coney, and the ball ricochets in traffic. And now Kavavit will, will restart things, put it back behind the cage to Whipple. Whipple lobs it out front. The shot is in the net and a goal for Ed Fay of the North. And it's 12-9. to 9. 
Again, an extra man opportunity. Uh, the North is running out of what we would normally call a 2-3-1 set. Two guys out front, three guys on the uh, goal line, right in front of the goal line, one guy behind the goal. Uh, they skipped everybody over, through a nice lob pass to Ed Fay. He makes a good bounce shot up in the goal. I don't think Sam Peterson had a chance at this one. You look at the other look, it looks like Andy Rodriguez, if you, you can see there, he's going to jump up. It's almost like as if he had to get out of the way. Well, you know, again, uh, there's a lot of similarities in lacrosse and the rules to hockey, and, you know, that play there is called screening the goaltender. The goaltender doesn't get a good opportunity to uh, see the shot come out of Ed face stick and uh, goes in the cage. Also, some similarities to soccer in terms of the movement away from the ball. Yeah, uh, well, again, I think the cross uh, has a great mix of almost every sport. You know, football uh, with the contact, soccer with the movement, uh, with and without the ball, basketball with the movement, with and without the ball. So we see a little bit of everything in this game. The South looking for a goal right now in this game. The uh, shot there by Dan Bowers, and that uh, will be possession to the South. Aaron Cabrillo will put it in. But 12-9 the score here. We've got 12 minutes left in this uh, contest. So the uh, South uh, finding out they are indeed in the game after jumping out of a 7-1 lead at the end of the first quarter. A good look uh, cage view from uh, inside the helmet. Uh, look at uh, what happens here after the shot. Dan Bowers takes the shot and uh, good night. Welcome to the 108 degree turf. And that's, uh, you know, there's a little of the football part of uh, lacrosse right there. Uh, nice, nice hit by Rodriguez after, uh, uh, as he was attempting to shoot the ball. He'll remember that the next time he gets yep. in a similar situation. We'll get it off even quicker. The North now coming up on the attack. This is Ed Fay. Look at tight right the goal. Stop it, Andrew Ripple with the goal. Great pass by Jack Beaver down to Andrew Ripple. And, uh, there wasn't much uh, the goaltender could do. He threaded the needle in between two defenders. Uh, we see this on um, tape. We see Judd. Well, watch these two sticks, he gets a ball through. Oh, yep. nice pass inside. Andrew gives him a little head fake down. The goalie drops and he sticks it right over his shoulder. Right in front of the crease, he was in tight 12 to 10 now, the score, Bob Trivert. Andrew Whipple in the celebration for the North squad. And Whipple putting him right back in this one. He is from Rondequin High School in New York. Again, another example of the, the New York connection. There are more of the New York players here this afternoon. Again, Rondequin was in the state playoffs, so he wouldn't have been in this game in the past. And it's nice to have Andrew here. He's going to go to prep school next year, and I imagine trying to get his grades up a little bit to get into a uh, possibly a better college situation. North now trying to come forward. If Peter Murphy of the North steps back on the field again, we'll have to get a shot of his shoes. He's wearing red, white, and blue shoes. I don't know what that is indicative of, but patriotism, or perhaps just representing the North and South. Is the South now trying to clear it? Actually, I think Peter's wearing uh, shoes that uh, have the color of his high school, Garden City High School in uh, Garden City, Long Island. Well, That's a be, guess on my part. Uh, well, could be a fashion trend in the future here at the high school. Has to go start game. He is off the field, but if he's on again, we'll point him out to you. The uh, South on the attack, Mike Keeney, who's had a, a good game. Was, uh, Mike's a great dodger out front. He'll juke this guy pretty good. He's got excellent legs. Um, he can go either right or left hand and had a wonderful year at Loyola High School. Keeney, though, turned away to get the legs. They start to get a little heavy this time of the game. This, this type of heat. Again, a humid afternoon in Baltimore. South Coast stay with attack. This is Kruger firing the shot and coming up with the Catrano to save. And now the North still has to come up with the clearance with 10 minutes of change left. 12 10. The North trying to clear it out. They uh, trail the South by the two goals. And now here we go. Canada coming up here for the North. Gets it right in front. But unable, Janela cannot get the shot off. And now the uh, pursuit for the ball, and we have whistles. And a whistle against Ganella, so it'll be a possession for the South. Again, the South and the Red. Look at the, uh, the replay here as the North quickly trying to come on. And uh, Ganella going after this ball, and he is going to get called for an infraction. And South possession. Alista will put it back to uh, Peterson, who we talked about, to Broadneck High School. That's down near the uh, capital of Maryland, Annapolis, Maryland is Broadneck. And they won the state championship this year in, uh, in public school, uh, MPSSAA. They had a great 16-1 uh, season. Uh, Sam's uh, team, Broadneck High School, won the state title for a second straight year. Charles and Morris had some trouble with it. 
And it will be uh, the South still leading the North, 12 to 10. More of the fourth quarter coming your way. Hey, Johnson, Bob Shiver back here at the Hall of Fame Lacrosse Classic, National Scholastic All-Star Game, put on by the Lacrosse Foundation. If you want to start a lacrosse program, there is the number. Lacrosse Foundation, it's all about lacrosse. We're in the fourth quarter, the South leading the North 12 to 11, but the North coming back, and we'll see a goal here by Ken Susi as they work it quickly up on the counterattack. It's going to be a nice feed from Buck over to Susi. He's right there. The fire at home, and it's a one-goal game now here in the fourth quarter, 12 to 11. The uh, South still holding on to the lead. We have a flag also coming up, Bob Trapper. Well, there's uh, another good opportunity the North's going to have on extra man offense. Uh, penalty, Pat Doyle hit the man, man in the head. Um, North will have an opportunity here to tie this game up. The last play was a good fast break by the North. Uh, it ended up being a three-on-two situation, and there was an opportunity a second ago to see that the uh, defense from the South really didn't handle that very well. And the only reason they didn't is because, you know, a lot of these guys are playing together for the first time. All right, the North put in play, they could tie it here on the extra man situation. So what started as a early South route, has turned into quite a lacrosse contest here as part of the Lacrosse Hall of Fame Classic, the Hall of Fame Classic, and now the uh, North is still on the attack. This is Joe Gianetti. They're working around, now right through the hole, and it's uh, broken up by the South, and the North maintaining. This is... He had just had an assist to bring him to one there. He scores the tying goal. Uh, here's the guy that's come all the way from uh, Northern California. Uh, nice play. There you see it. A great shot. And Peterson couldn't handle the hop. From California, Trevor Buck. You see him. He waits for the traffic to clear a little bit. Bang. It's in the net. And we have a tie game now. 12-12 with 7.07 left here in this National Scholastic All-Star Games. As we told you, whenever one team goes ahead, it's uh, certainly nothing to rest on. Two goals and an assist this afternoon for Trevor Buck. Not a bad day's work. Well, there's Michael Ford, number one, facing off for the South. I, again, I mentioned earlier, he played attack all year. What a versatile player. He's out there facing off for the North uh, South squad right now. They're going to score by quarters, and what has happened to the South squad in the uh, second half? They just have not been able to put it in the cage, and uh, consequently, the North has been able to come back. Maybe they spent it all in the first half. We'll wait and see. We'll see what they have left here in the final uh, six minutes and change. So the South back on the attack. Looking to go ahead. They've never trailed in this one. Rich Grimser, or rather, uh, Tim Spino has it for the uh, South. Here's Michael. Looks like he's going to try to dodge. Uh, take his man behind the goal, showing his attack skills. This should be a good matchup. Nice switch right there by Rodriguez. He switched with uh, Kuzma, who was one of the premier defensemen in the country in the high school. Mike Ford tried to take it himself. He couldn't, and now the North had a trouble on the clear. So the South pressure. Spino getting his stick in there. And the scramble for the ball continues, and finally the North comes up with it. And now the North. Beck McDonald with the big sticks. But uh, the North loses it, and now the South on the counterattack. This is Mike Ford once again. Ford working quickly, trying to get it in tight. They were trying to get it to Jake uh, Fergie, but they couldn't, and it'll be North possession. Let's go down to Doug Terry, where the individual has had a great game, Doug. Uh, uh, we have Tony Reed from Swickley in Pennsylvania going to Notre Dame. Uh, Tony, a little impressions other than it's a hot day. It's very hot. Uh, this game has been very tough, and it, I can't say too much about uh, how it's a pleasure to play with guys like these from all over the country. It's, it's just a pleasure. Why, it's very hot. why Notre Dame? You're obviously an outstanding player. What attracted you to Kevin Carter's program? Well, it wasn't really the, the program of lacrosse. It was the school. I really love the school, and lacrosse was there, so why not play? This young man certainly has his uh, head on his shoulders and is looking for an education as well as the lacrosse future. Back to you, Dave. You're right, Doug, and plenty of lacrosse skills, so he's picked a good school. And now the North back on the attack. And a save for the South as it was Jeff Newkirk looking for another goal, but the South now. Starting to come up the field. We have whistles again. It's a 12-12 game. Five and a half minutes left. Aaron Van Horn picked off that save after it bounced off Peterson's uh, 
stick, you'll see him pick this ground ball up. Uh, he gets hit in the head. Uh, the referee throws the flag, and Aaron Cape takes the ball up. And when he loses it in midline, that's when the referee will blow his whistle. Uh, Aaron's a nice lacrosse player who happens to uh, be coming here to Johns Hopkins, so he's getting used to uh, his future home. That's right, the uh, home one field. This uh, field has seen many good games. Now, this should be a pretty good extra man opportunity for the South. There's four or five guys for the South right now that have played quite a bit of lacrosse together. Watson from St. Paul's, Ford. Uh, There's Watson with a shot. Uh, speed. Now, these guys have played a lot of lacrosse together over the years. I look for the South to get a, uh, another good chance there. That was a good one there. Sherrod's with the ball right now. 12-12 to score. Speedo. Feed to Watson, and it goes over his stick. It will be another north possession. So 12-12, the score. And uh, this is everything you want in an all-star game. A fantastic finish, it looks like, is in the office. North trying to clear it, and Watson full of uh, them well, vinegar. Well, you'll see that the... Uh North is down a man, so the uh, South has an opportunity to ride, as we say, which is to try to prevent them, uh, the North from clearing the ball. The South will have an opportunity to ride each man on the North one-on-one -on -one, and try to get possession of the ball back. Ride, in effect, is, is the full-court pressure uh, exactly. of basketball. And this is a good matchup. Two uh, quality players, Watson and uh, Kuzma, the defenseman that uh, we talked a little bit about today. They work it upfield. The North quickly coming on the attack. Looking to get it to Brian Merritt. And it'll be south possession. Well, what did happen there, they cleared the ball. They got it into that box there. So the North penalty will be uh, expired. Uh, now we will be on the You mentioned the ride, though. You can, it doesn't just have to be a man down, man up situation. It, even straight, you could go to a ride. Well, you definitely want to try to pressure the other team from clearing the ball. The uh, clearing team does have an advantage because they, on their half of the field, can have seven players, you know, three defensemen, three mid fielders uh, and a goaltender uh, and the riding team can only have six so there is a two on one. What do you think they're talking about here at this point? Well again uh, as the coach as Frank mentioned we don't talk to them early they're just trying to make sure they're coordinated they have their substitutions down properly uh, and they have the right numbers of players on the field that's probably their biggest concern right now. Strategy isn't uh, going to be that big of a play here until it gets maybe down to a minute or two then we might see one of the coaches call a timeout. A great feed behind the Back shot by Todd Pollock. And a save by Todd Pollock. Well, a little showtime here. So Pollock, uh, boy, that would have electrified the North bench. You look Watch at him this the shot here. Takes it left-handed. He's getting good pressure from the defenseman there. He throws a bullet down there. And I don't think Sam Peterson even saw the ball. It went off his leg out of bounds. Yeah, it was uh, luck. Sam Peterson uh, positioning everything. Mike Donovan with the shot. Yeah. Replay. We might see uh, Todd Pollock make a nice screen. The goaltender never saw this ball. Uh, Pollock, look at how big he is standing in front of the goaltender here, uh, blocking his uh, vision of the ball. Nope, he didn't. Uh, there, he's coming in a little bit. He might have uh, thrown Sam Peterson. Distract him. Distract him a little bit. It's a good down shot. Yeah, but I think Peterson probably shot the, saw the shot take off, but then after that, it got a little bit muddy because, uh, as you pointed out, Pollock getting in front with the screen. Donovan. With a shot. Other than that, it's easy to be a goal The ball flying 90 miles an hour at you in traffic. Now we're starting to see subtly a little strategy here. The South team put Kevin Reichert into the game there. Uh, this is the midfield they started the game with. Kevin is an outstanding player here. Uh, played for the uh, number one lacrosse team in the state this year, St. Mary's High School, and, uh, and is a good face-off guy. So the South trying to get possession of the ball back. Um, see if they can't tie the game back up. St. Mary's High School out of Annapolis. Kevin Reichert. Pick, pick, right. The ball. Working around the south. Trying to come on the attack. Nice interception by Donovan. Now here comes Donovan racing upfield. Nifty interception. Let's see if he can finish the play. Fires it just to the left. But it'll be north possession. 
And then actually the North has countered uh, with a little strategy of their own. They have Donovan playing uh, today with Jim uh, Ganella, who uh, the two of them are going to go to Duke next year. So I think the coaches recognize that and try to stick them on the uh, field together. You see Donovan coming up field, trying to do it all. He just started this whole thing with the interception. Well, Donovan and Ganella probably feel like they're already playing for Duke. They're playing together. they got the blue jerseys on. We'll look at the, the shot again. They work it around now. This is Gianetti for the North. Taking a few stick checks. A shot and a save by Peterson. And now the South will try to clear, but under all kinds of pressure. The There's a ride we talked about a little bit earlier. A, a nice play by the North all over the North. Possession of the ball back. Possession. So Greg Herman got the ball, but uh, there's no one up field to pass it to, and then he uh, had some trouble working it around. North keep it in. And they continue to pressure, so the North are really having the better of the second half. It's been a, a tale of two halves almost. The ball to the sideline, and it'll be south possession as the North throws the way. Two minutes of change left in this contest, the National Scholastic All-Star Game. We are in Baltimore, Maryland. We are watching the future of college lacrosse, the best in high school lacrosse. And they have indeed put on a show this afternoon. So the South. Dive through! We'll put it in play. You look at the breakdown. Ten to one. The North is outscored the South here in the second half. Mike Ford bringing out for the South, trying to reverse that trend. Ford is checked by Tony Reed. This lob over to Chris Brown. Brown. We have whistles. And a timeout for the Red, for the South. So the South calls a timeout. And they are trailing the North. 13 to 12 with two minutes remaining. So the South are going to talk some strategy here and try to uh, sort things out for the final two minutes. Well, okay, listen, again, we talked about in an All-Star game, uh, the and the coaches hey, mentioned Alan, this, uh, their biggest uh, concern during the, the majority the ball, of the game is, is to make sure the kids are getting equal time and, and they're having a positive experience. Right? Uh, so you have to really be ready to run. this weekend. We're excited with cross Located just west of Homewood Field. Uh, you the world's greatest collection of lacrosse memorabilia and features a gift shop for all of your lacrosse needs. Stop by and see us during your weekend of lacrosse action. More than likely, I think they, what Coach Haynes is trying to do is he's trying to get a positive isolation situation, possibly get the ball in the number 12 Michael Watson's hand. Okay. Now, if they get the ball, they must score, which means they're going to try to take the air out of it. Push them out of the box, make sure you're alert for the second slide. Get a situation where they have a nice one-on-one opportunity to try to beat them. Again, the South probably still having trouble figuring this one out. Somehow now they're down by one goal, 13 to 12 after it for a while as if they were going to be able to cruise to a comfortable victory here, jumping out to a 7 to 1 lead early on. But uh, in the second half, the North uh, just, just coming in waves and... Uh, really having the better of the play, and, and part of that probably the North slowing it down more, not getting in the run-and-gun game that seemed to work uh, so effectively for the South. It'll be the South possession. Two minutes and ten seconds left. They're going to try to tie it up. Is the South and North trying to hold it off and secure the victory. Ball will be put in play on the far side, the far right side. This is Chris Brown. Yeah, here's Watson with the ball on Kuzma. Kuzma, uh, an outstanding defender from Yorktown, is going to Johns Hopkins. Watson, the best player in the Baltimore area, going to Virginia. Play, play, play. Here's Watson, the matchup we talked about. Watson tries to stuff it home, and we have whistles. Michael made a spin move, beat him a little bit on the inside roll. Uh, Kuzma kind of bounced him just a little bit, and Michael stepped into the crease, so it'll be uh, North possession. possession. You look what happens here. You can't step in the crease if you're an offensive player, and you're going to see Watson do that. Watson, Kuzma on him, turns, and he yeah. lands here. Air Watson on that occasion. But minute 56 left. The North with this 13 to 12 lead. They try to clear. Now the North is going to have a situation if they get the ball into the offensive end of the field. We may see a timeout by the coach. Uh, 
back over. It's a, uh, a rule that's only applicable in the last two minutes of the game. To, uh, to prevent something like a four exactly. corners type of situation where you're just wasting the ball. Uh, uh, Marsh, you can do that when you do the long passes. Doug Terry is down on the field. Doug, uh, you're right in the middle of things. A little controversy, uh, Dave. Uh, so the North team wanted to get a timeout, set up that uh, situation Bobby talked about, about uh, making remind of the players about two minutes inside the box, and so the uh, referees determined there was no uh, no possession. So now Red's going to have it. That's a big turnover. So the South with possession, you, you can hear the the North coach. Uh, it's funny how in the last two minutes of the All Star game, suddenly the intensity level rises. And no longer is a friendly match. Penalty called there against Tommy Smith. He called a trip. The referee made a slight mistake there. There was a penalty right before it fell to the ground. We might see this. He never lost possession of the ball. He could have let the play go on, but I think the referee thought that uh, possession of the ball, the ball had fallen out of Michael's stick, so he blew his whistle. Uh, so Smith goes off with the penalty. You look at number 24, Tommy Smith, and now man advantage for the South here in these critical waning moments of this contest with a minute 32 left. And I think the South would probably call a timeout here, but in this All-Star game, they're limited to one and a half, and they've already used their one this half. So uh, they're going to try to... Uh, Looks like they're setting up in a 2 3 1 extra man offense. Muller, oh, oh, Watson misses it. I think he was already looking at the shot because he was open. Muller, out front, this is scoring. Oh boy, did he fire that one, but it sails to the end line. It'll be south possession once again. Yeah, what he's going to try to do here is a 2 3 1. He's going to drive aside, try to draw this defenseman on the corner and put the ball to Save. the guy on the side for a good shot. Uh, Michael, I think, could have stepped in a little bit further. Watson twirls his stick afterwards in frustration. And now the door. With 55 seconds left, Tony Reed. Now they may uh, call their timeout. Uh, Time uh, out. They have to keep the ball here in this offensive third of the box. If they step out, uh, the South will get possession back. So this affects the last two minutes of the game. For the leading team only, the team that's ahead, or if there's a tie score, they have to get it into this box and keep it in the box. Morris doing a nice job freezing the ball right here. 29 seconds left. North, 13 to 12. Great comeback we've seen this afternoon. Well, hard for Ed Faye. You look at the replay, uh, the feet coming up here, Brian Merritt. I mean, look at that. What would you do if you're at Faye? Well, I think throw? if I'm in an all-star game and I'm playing down here in front of these, this nice crowd at Johns Hopkins and uh, this is uh, uh, being on television, I'd have probably shot yeah. it too. Shoot it. One more name, we should, time we shout his name. So why not shoot it? Merritt gets the assist. There you see it again, Ed Faye. And what a game this has been. Great comeback for the North, but we've seen some great lacrosse on both sides. And now there's 20 seconds left in the South. One for five, perhaps. But who knows? You can score two in 20 seconds. Off to the races is Keeney. They get it in tight, and Watson turns and fires, and it's over the crossbar, and it'll be another South possession with 11 seconds left. Well, Michael's had two good shots out of here in the last minute, and we just haven't been able to convert. Uh, right in tight, it was uh, Chris Brown who tried to stuff it home. And we have a uh, south possession again, north penalty. Six seconds left, 14 to 12, the north leading. So the south playing for that one last goal. Chris Brown will put it in play. Who's the MVP today, Dave? Boy, that's a good question. That's a real good question. The voters are scrambling now to try to figure it out a little bit. Uh... Chris Brown with it, and Trout fires a shot. Toronto comes up with a Team effort by the North. I don't think any one person uh, really stood out and took over this game. Trevor Buck had a nice, a uh, couple nice plays. Only Reed had a couple nice plays. So, uh, the selectors are going to have a difficult time figuring out who was the outstanding player in this game. Congratulations! That really is going to be a difficult uh, situation. Uh, uh, they're trying to come up with an MVP. 
game game we're talking about the All-Star game where you see so many uh, displays and, and really the time is limited too as uh, they try to get everybody in but the North coming up with a 14 to 12 victory this afternoon and uh, it was a good game in a sense that uh, because each team had their half and at the end of the day the North coming up with more goals and that's what it's all about. The North defeating the South 14 to 12 in this National Scholastic All-Star game here at Homewood Field. We're going to come back with our closing comments. Dave Johnson back at Homewood Field in Baltimore. The final of the National Scholastic All-Star game. The North defeating the South 14 to 12. And let's look at the game-winning goal for the North. Lucky number 13. And it was scored by number 13. Joe Donovan coming up field after an interception. He fires it into the strings. And the celebration for the North. And that's how they would come out on top. We're going to come back here at Homewood Field and meet the most valuable player of the National Scholastic All-Star Game. We'll do that after these messages. Stay with us. Hey, Johnson, back at Homewood Field in Baltimore. The North defeating the South 14-12 in the National Scholastic All-Star Game. The most valuable player presented by the New England. Let's meet him. He is Trevor Buck, and Doug Terring is with him. The North South Classic game is truly coast to coast. And our MVP is Trevor Buck of St. Ignatius Prep in San Francisco. Trevor, has to be the greatest thrill for you as a cross player. Yeah, it felt great. Can't can't believe it. Young man had a great day. Led the North back uh, from that uh, early deficit. Dave. He is the most valuable player, Trevor Buck, the most valuable player presented by the New England. Uh, Trevor Buck uh, with two goals on this afternoon here as the uh, North defeating the uh, South 14-12. to 12. And what a uh, classic all-star game it was. We'll come back and wrap it up after these messages. the final of the National Scholastic All-Star Game. The North coming back from an 11-3 halftime deficit to defeat the South 14-12. It really was a tale of two halves. And the North coming back, you see the celebration. Trevor Buck, the MVP presented by the New England. And it was a great story with Buck with two goals. For Doug tearing down the field, my partner Bob Driver, Dave Johnson, thanking you for watching the National Scholastic All-Star Game.